Hi, I'm Darren Darnley with VMAC. VMAC is the leader in compressed air innovation, designing and manufacturing the most innovative mobile air compressors and multi-power systems available. This video will provide an overview of the VMAC multifunction power system. I'll go over the multifunction components, benefits of using a multi-power system, and the safety features. I'll also walk through the control system and how to set the multifunction up to best suit your needs. Then I'll turn it on and show how it runs. After, I'll explain how to service the multifunction and give some steps to follow if there's a problem. The VMAC multifunction is the ultimate multi-power machine. There are five popular models in addition to the Your Power, Your Choice option, which is the industry's most customizable multi-power system available with over 2,000 possible configurations. This particular unit is a VMAC multifunction oilman series, which includes everything you need for safe operations on any job site in a single compact system. It is belt driven by a Kubota diesel engine and features a 45 CFM rotary screw air compressor, an eight kilowatt continuous AC generator, a 250 amp DC welder, a 12 to 48 volt battery booster charger, a PTO with a 10 gallon minute pump, a battery blanket, noise reduction features, SPAR heater connections, and a factory installed cold climate kit tested to minus 40 degrees. The multifunction oilman series also includes the shocker positive air shutoff system, which automatically senses high revving engine situations and closes the air supply to the engine. Some benefits of the VMAC multifunction include size and weight savings. The system is up to six cubic feet smaller and up to 400 pounds lighter than other multi-power brands, and up to 600 pounds lighter than having a separate air compressor, generator, and welder. This frees up space and reduces truck gross vehicle weight, allowing you to carry more tools and equipment or improve fuel economy. With up to six different types of power in one system, the VMAC multifunction reduces fuel by up to 30% and reduces maintenance, saving time and money with less fuel wasted and less downtime for servicing. The VMAC multifunction controls and digital display box are remote mounted with an electronic key switch and selector switches for PTO, genset, compressor. There's an LCD display for compressor on-off controls observing system status and adjusting parameters. A generator welder control box comes with a genset voltage meter and selector. Welding current control and arc force, as well as a socket for optional remote welding control. With the VMAC multifunction six in one power system, everything you need is with you in one compact system. Nothing will stop you on the job site. To keep the operator and system safe, the VMAC multifunction is equipped with many safety features which we will go over in the presentation. Before operating the VMAC multifunction for the first time, complete the following checklist. Check the oil level in the tank. Check for any fluid leaks around the unit. Ensure pneumatic equipment is securely connected and discharge valve is closed. Turn the key switch to the run position. Wait for the display box to finish going through the system check. If there are any errors, the system will be in system ready state. When you're ready to start the VMAC multifunction, turn the key to the start position. Hold for about one second and then release, or press on enter button. The display box should go into glow plug mode for one to 15 seconds, then starting mode where the engine will crank. Once engine speed is stable, the system will enter system running mode and is ready for use. Turn the compressor, genset, and or PTO switch on. The clutch should engage and start to build air and or power. To turn off the system, turn off the air compressor, genset, and or PTO switch, and then press the display box on enter button. The system will go into stopping mode for about 25 seconds. Turn the key to the off position to fully power off all electronics. The key switch can also be used to shut down the system. However, this will directly turn off the power to the control system and the system will have to go through its system check before being able to restart. 
With the VMAC multifunction, you'll be able to work in any climate, as the cold climate kit comes standard on our five most popular multifunction power systems. It's been tested and proven in extreme cold temperatures, down to minus 40 degrees. The cold climate kit is a three-part heater, a compressor heater, an engine heater, and an engine oil heater. The factory installed cold climate kit heaters require a connection to an external AC power source or a minimum 1500 watt inverter. We recommend the cold climate kit to run for 30 to 90 minutes prior to operation, depending on the temperature. There's a 1 to 15 second delay for glow plugs to warm, depending on the temperature, and the system will not turn the compressor on unless the engine and compressor temperatures are above 41 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius. With the power inverter set up, you can turn the inverter on and warm the multifunction up on the way to the job site. The multifunctions control system is a 12 volt digital control system with LCD display that shows system hours, service reminders and safety functional messages. There is a remote mounted generator welder control panel and a compressor control panel. Separate selector switches engage the compressor, generator and PTO. Any one or all three can be selected at any time. The multifunction control system comes with many features including starting and stopping the control system with a display box, key switch or remote wire. Monitoring engine load and disabling the compressor system if the generator or PTO switches are enabled and engine speed drops below 3200 RPM. Once the engine speed increases, the control system will automatically re-engage the clutch on the compressor and automatic engine shutdown if no air use is detected. The control system also includes compressor, welder, generator and engine over temperature shutdown. A blowdown valve discharges system pressure in the air oil separator tank when the system goes into standby mode or shuts down. When only using the air compressor, the engine will idle up and down with air demand and shut down with no air use. The engine will automatically restart with air use or with low engine or compressor temperature or low battery voltage. This reduces fuel use and maintenance which saves time and money with less fuel wasted and less downtime for servicing. The control system monitors the compressor, engine coolant and manifold temperature probe connection and temperature range as well as the air pressure sensor connection and overpressure. The control system will auto detect engine under speed, over speed, running when unexpected, no tack signal, starting error and low oil level. Some other features of the control system include low battery voltage monitoring, low fuel level warning, air filter restriction warning, data logs of errors and warning messages, service reminders at 200 and 400 hours, audible alarm to sound two seconds prior to engine starting, LED beacon to flash when the engine is in standby mode and can restart at any moment, and the hour meter. The control system allows for a truly customizable user experience. Adjustable system parameters include system pressure, unload delay, standby delay, top-up pressure, air use rate, restart pressure, auto restart, and battery settings. We'll now go into Diagnostics menu to discuss these system parameters and adjustable settings. Enter the Diagnostics menu by pushing the two arrow keys at the same time for five seconds. Wait for it to scroll through the user setup, then press Enter. Scroll through the menu screen by pressing back and next arrow buttons. Press the enter button to adjust the default parameter. System pressure allows setting of maximum working pressure between 80 and 175 psi. Unload delay. This is the time delay to change states from running to unloading the compressor. You can choose between 30 seconds to 30 minutes or never. Standby delay. This begins after the unload delay has expired and shuts off the compressor and engine.
You can set this between 1 to 30 minutes or never. The engine and compressor will restart with air use. Top up PSI. This allows tank pressure to be close to minimum system pressure. If the system pressure is set to 150 and the top up PSI is set to 10 PSI, the system will top the air tank up to 150 when the air pressure drops down to 140 PSI. High air rate. This monitors air usage to determine if a tool is being used. This high air rate setting will also determine if there is an air leak or if a tool is being used from 0 to 30 PSI. This can be adjusted based on the size of the air receiver tank and the air tool used. A small tank with a large tool will have a large air rate, and a large tank will make the air rate lower. This parameter allows a quick restart response when the system is in standby rather than reaching the restart pressure to restart the system. Our air compressor is designed to run at 100% duty cycle, so you don't need a large air receiver tank. We recommend a minimum 10 gallon air receiver tank capable of 200 PSI so that the operator has a supply of air while the system is restarting. Restart pressure. If for any reason the system drops below your specified PSI while in standby, it will restart. You can set the value between 80 to 175 PSI. Cold engine restart. This is great for extreme cold weather environments. If the multifunction is in standby, the system monitors its internal temperature, and if it drops below a preset value of 23 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 5 degrees Celsius, it will restart the engine. Disable auto engine restart. We recognize that it's easy to forget to turn the multifunction off when it's in standby mode, so we have an LED beacon. In the unlikely event that you forget to turn off the multifunction, this feature automatically shuts the system off for safety reasons. This disables the engine from starting in standby after an adjustable time setting, which can be always, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 120 minutes, or never. Allow low battery restart. When in standby, the system will monitor battery voltage. If the battery voltage drops below the preset value, the engine will start to recharge the battery. It will also monitor and recharge your truck's battery if it's connected. You can enable or disable this feature. Battery restart lower threshold. The low battery threshold for restart can be set between 10 and 14 volts. Battery restart upper threshold. After the engine starts to recharge the battery, the engine will continue to charge the battery until this upper threshold is achieved, which can be set between 10 and 15 volts. Battery restart delay. The engine will continue to run for this preset time after the upper threshold is achieved to ensure the battery is fully charged. This can be set at 1, 2, 5, 10, or 30 minutes. Factory reset. This will reset all adjustable parameters back to the factory setting. The battery booster charger functions as a battery charger with the ability to assist low voltage battery in cranking the engine over. Under certain conditions, it's possible to get up to 300 amps to assist during cranking. Many starters can draw over 1000 amps while trying to start an engine. The multifunction booster relies on the batteries it is boosting to assist in starting the engine. How long the boosting process takes will be affected by the size and health of the vehicle's batteries. If the vehicle's batteries are completely dead, it may not be possible to boost. Before attempting to boost any battery, ensure that the welder control is set to zero. Turn the generator on and connect the battery booster cables to the battery, ensuring that they are the correct polarity. Measure and record the battery voltage, as you will need this voltage value later. Set the voltage control to the appropriate value, for example, if you're boosting a 12 volt battery, set the voltage control to 12 volts. If you're boosting a 24 volt battery, set the voltage control to 24 volts. Set the current control to 30%. Measure and record the battery voltage. Compare this voltage reading with the one taken previously. If the voltage has gone up, then continue with the boost. 
that the voltage has not increased, you may need technical support. Allow the battery booster charger to run for two minutes and then set the current control to 100%. Allow the battery booster charger to run for another two minutes and then try to start the vehicle. If the vehicle started, then the battery booster charger has been successful. If it didn't, then set the current control to 30% and allow the booster charger to run for five minutes. Then set the current control to 100% and run the booster charger for another five minutes. Try and start the vehicle again. If the vehicle didn't start, set the current control to 30% and allow the booster charger to run for two hours. Set the current control back to 100% and try starting the vehicle. If the vehicle still cannot start, the battery will need to be replaced. After boosting a battery, it is always a good idea to have the battery professionally tested. When you want to weld, press the genset button. Turn the voltage dial to weld and plug in your welding leads. To adjust the arc force and current, use the controls found on the control box. When you're done welding, simply press the genset button to turn the weld function off. Some multifunction models come with a PTO port and the option to choose between a 5, 8 or 10 gallon per minute hydraulic pump which can be used to power a crane, outriggers, or a hydraulic tool circuit. To engage the PTO, press the PTO button. Routine maintenance is recommended to ensure optimal operation of the multifunction. A well-planned maintenance program lowers maintenance costs and reduces downtime. The multifunction LCD box will display a message to notify you when the air compressor is due for a service. The multifunction is easy to service because the coalescing filter, air filter, and the air oil separator tank are all easily accessible by removing the one service panel. The air compressor should be serviced in intervals of 200 hours or 6 months and every 400 hours or 12 months. Service should be performed at the lesser of the two intervals, whichever comes first. The Kubota diesel engine should be serviced after the first 50 hours and then every 100 hours. Compressor service kits and diesel engine service kits are available from VMAC. More information can be found in the VMAC manual or online, including this maintenance checklist. The multifunction makes it easy to detect and identify errors. The system will not start if an error is detected and if an error is detected while the system is running, the engine and compressor will shut down. The digital control box will flash a warning light and show and log the error. The operator will have to scroll through the errors and resolve them before restarting the system. This prevents the engine and compressor from damaging itself and keeps the operator safe. VMAC offers the industry's first limited lifetime warranty on the VMAC air end and a two-year warranty on all other major components. The Kubota engine is covered by Kubota's two-year warranty. It is very important that you refer to their owner's manual for service intervals and document your oil changes and servicing. You can visit VMAC's website for more information about these warranties and the service requirements. This completes the VMAC multifunction operational training. I'm Darren Darnley, VMAC National Territory Rep. If you have any questions about the VMAC multifunction, visit vmacair.com or call us at 1-877-912-6605.